Welcome everyone. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure today to be joined by Professor Roland Martin from the University of Zurich. Uh, you may remember that we've featured uh, a couple of studies uh, from their group uh, over the past couple of months. Uh, and in particular today we're going to be talking to, to Professor Martin about one really exciting uh, piece of work that really uh, helped add a new piece or, or work out where a new piece of the MS puzzle fitted. But before we get into that, uh, Professor Martin, thank you again for, for taking the time to join us today. Um, maybe can you just start by giving a brief introduction to yourself and the work that you're doing here? Yeah, so you're welcome. Thank you for coming. So um, um, I'm working here at the University Hospital and University of Zurich. Um, and our work is um, patient related. So we have a large MS clinic and that serves the Zurich greater uh, area and the MS patients for, uh, from this um, uh, city and the area around and uh, at the same time we also conduct a lot of research into disease mechanisms, developing novel treatments. These are the things that we are interested in. Okay, fantastic. And so, uh, I mean, we've already had a bit of a chat about a lot of the work that you're doing here and, and it's all very interesting, but the, the main study that we're talking about today was to do with your recent work looking at B cells and the role mm -hmm. of B cells um, in multiple sclerosis. What sort of started your interest in B-cells? Yeah, well B-cells have been an interest for neuroimmunologists for a long time. Uh, actually the fact that MS patients have oligoclonal bands in the CSF is something that's known since 70 years now. Um, so there was always an interest in antibodies and B-cells. Uh, however, whether they are pathogenic antibodies or not has been controversial. There have been very intriguing observations and some of them have been confirmed, others not. Um, what started the interest in B-cells, not particularly in our group, but generally was the uh, success uh, with depleting B-cells in patients and having really a profound influence on disease activity. Um, and in our group we were always focusing more on the T-cell side because of the strong HNA association of MS and um, our B-cell interest evolved from finding that uh, lymphocytes proliferate more and that there are uh, alterations of homeostasis in MS patients in the immune system, yeah, that they just proliferate more spontaneously and that these proliferating cells were actually T and B-cells. Okay, and so I mean, if you just <coughs> summing up the the work that you did recently, um, you know, can you can you explain to us what that what that really showed? Yeah, so the study that we recently published showed that um, B and T lymphocytes engage in a very tight crosstalk and interaction, and when they do that, um, they both begin to proliferate, um, and uh, we believe that the B cells mediate something to T cells that makes them uh, turn into uh, pathogenic cells that migrate to the brain and can cause damage in the brain. So we think that it's a, a, the crosstalk between the two that is uh, relevant for T cells homing to the brain and uh, then causing trouble there. Whether the B cells only act in the peripheral blood or also in the meninges for example where follicles have been described and whether vitamin D and EBV is involved as potential uh, starters of all this, we don't know yet. Okay, and you sort of already touched on on HLA, and so HLA is is one of the well, a specific type of HLA. We know is one of the biggest genetic um, susceptibility factors for multiple sclerosis. You also found that that was involved in this story as well. Yeah. So what what we think and what the data shows is that um, B cells upregulate HLA, um, particularly HLA DR15, which is the allele that is associated with MS. And when they do that, uh, they facilitate interaction with the T lymphocyte um, and then this growth uh, starts. And um, even though we could not demonstrate that statistically significantly yet, I think that the rest, rest or at least some of the other MS risk alleles are probably also involved. Um, as you probably know, many of these are cytokines, so they are mediators that uh, um, lymphocytes make uh, or their receptors or transcription factors that are all somehow involved in growth and activation of lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. So we think the HLA DR15 is the most important in this but others probably contribute as well. Yeah. So I mean this is 
from my perspective, and again, I said this to you before, this really fits in a piece of the puzzle that has been confusing for a little while. We've known, I guess, especially in more recent times, that B cells are probably playing a role in MS, but we didn't know how. This, mm. this really gives us an idea as to, to how. What's, you know, what might this mean now for the future? Yeah, I mean, one important aspect is that it gives us a very um, tangible and relatively easy to handle system and how to examine the immune system in a dish. Uh, so different from somebody who has psoriasis, where you can take a piece of uh, skin and examine the immune response there. In MS patient, we obviously cannot take brain tissue. Mm -hmm. So we need to come up with systems that allow us to study uh, relevant immune responses uh, in, a, in a dish in vitro. And this system does allow that. So in, in the future, what it could lead to is uh, not only to a better understanding of what is involved, environmental, genetic factors, others, uh, but also how to manipulate it, hopefully in a beneficial way. Yeah? So um, you probably heard at the meeting that you just were at the Actrims that uh, BTK inhibitors, uh, yeah. a molecule that uh, inhibits uh, B cell activation, uh, show uh, promise uh, um, for development as a new drug. And we found also in this TB interaction that BTK is involved in there. Mm -hmm. And there are many other molecules that could be targeted by therapies uh, in the future. Yeah. And the idea being that I guess the more we understand this, the more targeted the therapies can be and so the, the less the side effects potentially yeah. rather than having to be really widespread with, with our approach. Absolutely, yeah. So in the moment, uh, I think MS was really um, a very successful indication to develop novel therapy. So we have a lot now available. But at least some of them have also um, severe or can have severe side effects and uh, our patients are usually young women or young men who are sick for a long period of time and uh, our main goal is to now come up with treatments that are, like you said, much more specific and leave Im normal immune function alone so that we can cope with infections uh, and do not get tumors and uh, do not get side effects that are unwanted. and. Um, Antigen specific uh, tolerance induction is, is one of these therapies that we also work on um, in the lab and have experimental clinical trials already ongoing. But that's uh, the mid term to long term goal. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, again, thank you very much for coming and talking to us today. Um, having been had the chance to sit down with you for a while before this and talk about it, um, I can tell everyone on MS Translate that there is some really exciting work. Uh, going on here that we uh, hopefully will be able to talk more about in the future as well but we'll certainly keep track of all of the, the work that you're you're doing uh, and keep everyone updated thank you again thank you also for coming and taking the time yeah so thank you thanks